Good day everyone! I am Kenneth Imagbato and welcome to English 5, Technology for Teaching and Learning. But before anything else, let us first have a prayer. Almighty God, you are the source of life. We thank you for all the blessings you have given to us. Thank you for giving us another day to learn something new. Clear our mind and help us focus. Guide us and our teacher as we study and create new learning experiences. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. An organized classroom is certainly a classroom governed by existing classroom rules. This time, allow me to present to you our classroom rules. First, listen attentively when the teacher discusses. Second, obey to the teacher's instructions. Third, participate if necessary, and last but certainly not the least, respect everyone's opinion. To test if you are really willing to conform to our classroom rules, I have here with me a drill. If you find these statements resonating on your end, then I encourage you to act accordingly. Is that clear to you? Alright, first, bend your neck to the left if you're tired. Second, Lay your head on the desk if you're exhausted and wanted to rest. Third, raise your both arms if you have dreams you want to achieve in life. And lastly, clap your hands if you know that God is with you throughout your journey. A statement from Marcos Aurelio saying, What stands in the way becomes the way. May this be a reminder for us to keep going despite the hardships or the obstacles that we encounter along the way. These hardships are meant to serve as our pathways as we arrive to our designated destination, the future we deserve. At this moment, I will be checking your attendance. Kindly write your names in a one-fourth sheet of paper and kindly pass it to the center aisle. Alright, I have now with me your one-fourth. This will serve as your attendance for today. This time, can I call Anna Rose to please give the class a recapitulation of our last topic. Alright, so last meeting, we discussed about action words or verb. This time around, we will be having an activity. We call this one as Cabbage Paper Game. Are you guys familiar with this game? Alright, to begin with, you will be given four crumpled papers in a sequential manner. You will be singing chika ding while passing the paper you are holding to the person next to you. Once the teacher says stop, that is the time when the person holding the paper will have to give her or his insights about the term or word. Is the instruction clear to you, class? Alright, let's begin. Stop! For those who have with them the crumpled papers, you discuss briefly those words written in there. Alright, thank you so much class for your participation. This time around, we will now proceed with our new topic which is about the 5 speech styles by Martin Jews. But before anything else, do you know something about Martin Jews? Have you encountered the phrase speech style before? What do you think are the different speech styles according to Martin Jews? And lastly, do you think that these speech styles are applicable in our discourses? Since I have noticed that most of you are still not knowledgeable enough about this topic, we will have another set of activity. This time, a set of definitions of the five different speech styles will be pasted on the board. You are to label them accurately as much as possible. After you label the definition, you will have to give a brief explanation and I will be the one to elaborate. 
Martin Jus is a linguist and German professor who categorizes speech styles into five styles. Speech styles or styles are the forms of language that the speakers use. They are usually measured along a formal to informal scale which involves speech styles such as frozen, formal, consultative, casual, and intimate. Speech styles are defined as alternative ways within a community which often range from what more colloquial to more formal. Styles are linguistic varieties linked to the formality of the situation. So again, the five different uh, speech styles of Martin Juice are the intimate, the casual, the consultative, the formal, and the frozen. Can I have a student or a volunteer to label the first description with any of the five speech styles? For a first description, it is a non-public speech style which occurs between or among close family members or intimate individuals. So the answer is intimate. This style is private which occurs between or among close family members or individuals. The language used in this style may not be shared in public. This type is used in talks between two very close individuals. It is described by an economy of words with a high chance of nonverbal communication. Like casual, there is also a free and easy participation of both speaker and listener. Intimate is a non-public speech style which occurs between or among close family members or intimate individuals. The language used in this style is private vocabulary since it happens among people who have known each other for a long time and have shared many experiences. They know each other well. They can sometimes complete each other's sentence and know that the other person is thinking even before they open their mouths. Now, can I have one student or a volunteer to label the second description with any of the five speech styles? Our second description is, this speech is style used among friends and acquaintances that do not require background information. So the answer is, casual. This style is common among peers and friends. Jargon, slang, or the vernacular language are used, also known as informal style. It is usually used between friends or even insiders who have things to share. In this type, there is a free and easy participation of both speaker and listener. Casual is a speech style used among friends and acquaintances that do not require background information. Jargon, slang, street language, gay language, or vulgar, vulgar words are commonly used. This style is used when there are no social barriers to consider. For the third time, can I have one student or a volunteer to label the third description with any of the five speech styles? Alright, so our third description is, Professional or any mutually acceptable language is a must in this style. Examples of situations are communication between teachers and students, employers and employees, doctor and patient, judge and lawyer or president and his or her constituents so the answer is consultative this style is the standard one professional or mutually acceptable language is a must in this style examples of situations are communication between teachers and students employers and employees doctor and patient judge and lawyer or president and his or her constituents the third level of language, it is basically unplanned speech since the speaker uses the participation and feedback of the listener. The speaker will supply background information while well, again, the listener participates continuously. Consultative is a speech style that um, is considered to be the standard one. This style is used precisely among people who do not share common experiences or meaning thus Professional or mutually acceptable language is a must. It requires two-way participation and interruptions can occur during the communication. Okay, so this time, can I have one student or a volunteer to label the fourth description with any of the five speech styles? Okay, for our fourth description, 
This type uses formal words and expressions and is mostly seen in writing rather than speaking. It also disallows the use of ellipses, contractions, and qualifying modal adverbials. Alright, so the answer is formal. This style is used in formal settings. Unlike the consultative style, this one is a one-way communication. Examples are sermons by priests and ministers, state of the nation address of the president, formal speeches, or pronouncements by judges. This type uses formal words and expressions and is mostly seen in writing rather than speaking. It also disallows the use of ellipses, contractions, and qualifying modal adverbials. Formal is a type of speech that is used in formal settings and is used only for imparting information. Unlike the consultative style, this one is very characteristic to be a one-way communication. The speech is well organized and correct in grammar and diction. Technical vocabulary and exact definitions are important in this style. For our fifth and last term, can I have one student or a volunteer to label the fifth description? Alright, our fifth description is also known as fixed speech. It is the highest form of communicative style which is often used in respectful situations or formal ceremonies like Shakespearean plays, weddings, funerals, and more. Alright, so the answer is frozen. This style is frozen in time and remains unchanged. It mostly occurs in ceremonies. Common examples are the preamble to the constitution, Lord's Prayer, and allegiance to the country or flag. It is also known as fixed speech. It is the highest form of communicative style in which is, uh, which is often used in respectful situations or formal ceremonies like Shakespearean plays, weddings, funerals, and more. It also uses the complex grammatical sentence structure and vocabulary that are only known by experts in that field. Frozen speech is a speech style that is frozen in time and remains unchanged. It is a formal style whose quality is static, realistic, and may even be archaic. Can we have Janelle to please enumerate the speech styles by Martin Juice? And Saki, please give us a brief understanding of the different speech styles. Alright, thank you Janelle and Saki for sharing your understanding to the class. I can really tell that you were listening very well with our discussion. This time around, we will have an activity. We will be having a role play about the different speech styles. For the instructions, the class will be divided into five groups. Each group will have to choose a representative to pick a random paper containing a certain speech style you which you will have to present in front of the class. Each group will be given 5 minutes to prepare. After the given time, you will present a 4-minute act or play regarding the speech style that you have picked. For you to be guided, here is our criteria. Thank you so much class for your participation. How did you find the activity? What realizations were you able to gain from the activity? What do you think are the significance of having accurate speech style in a given context? Alright, can I have Rochelle to please give the class any words to ponder? Perhaps your understanding of the topic. Yes, you are right. Speech styles are different from one another. We use these styles depending on certain contexts. Meaning to say, if you want to achieve something during a conversation, always apply an appropriate style of speech. I can sense that this class have gained enough understanding of our topic today. But in order for us to gain more knowledge about it, let us answer these three sets of items. For the first one, we have enumeration. For the second one is identification. The third one is the KWL chart. 
For the enumeration and identification, you can have it written in a one-half sheet of paper. And for the KWL chart, you can place it in a band paper. Alright, time is up. Pass your paper in the center aisle. I will be the one to check this. For your assignment, surf the internet and look for examples of context that exemplifies the five speech styles. We have the intimate, the casual, consultative, formal, and frozen. And you are also to make an essay highlighting its significance. That is 500 words only. Alright, that's all for today. Goodbye and thank you for participating. Class dismissed. Thank you.